Okay, I've peeled, while I'm waiting for that stew to cook, I've peeled three potatoes and what I'm going to do is cut them into cubes. The stew has now, the water in the stew is now reduced to half the pot, so I'm going to put the lid on it now and turn it right down to a very gentle simmer until that meat is starting to fall apart. Um, I don't want it to reduce any more liquid because I need that liquid as the stock. Also, also now what I'm going to make quickly is the gravy for it to thicken it up when it's ready. So I've got... Let's see, I've got to make this quite thick, so I'll, I'll make a little bit extra because I can chuck out what I don't need. So there's probably three little tablespoons of flour in there. I need a, probably a teaspoon of sugar. Now I'm going to use the black, the dark soya sauce. And I'll probably have two teaspoons in there. I'm now going to add a little bit of water to this. I've added a couple of tablespoons of water to this and I've turned it into a paste. Now I'm going to add some boiling water because I want this ready to be put into the stew when it's done. And you just stir that around until you've got a nice paste made, but you still want it watery enough to be able to pour it out of this. A little bit more. So this is very, very, very thick now. This is going to be poured in to make the gravy for the pepper steak. I'm going to put this through nice and thick and make the gravy for it. Okay, I'll put the lid on this and um, I actually had to add a little bit more water to that as it was cooking because it got quite low. Now this meat is done. It's just about falling apart. It's perfect. It's just absolutely beautiful. So now we're going to add the potatoes that we've cured. Just drain the water out of the potatoes. Give that a stir. We're going to put the lid on that and cook that for another 15 minutes just till those cubes are cooked. Put the lid on and come back in 15 minutes. Okay, that's been 15 minutes. Let's give that a stir. Test the potatoes. I've added more water to this gravy mix. All I've got to do now is thicken this up for the pots. And add a little bit more. bit more water. Because I want a reasonably nice gravy. A little bit more water. It's just the right consistency now. And I'm just going to paste a little bit of it. needs to have the I'm going to add more pepper now because I want to make these pepper steak pies I want you to be able to taste the pepper steak the pepper in them that's plenty just get that a quick wash because I ate on it give that a stir now that's finished absolutely perfect. I don't want to add any salt to that at all because of the soy sauce in it 
It's very, very tasty from all the juices, from the meat, the onions and everything. I'm going to put the lid on this now, put it in the fridge, and tomorrow I'm going to show you how to make the actual pies. Okay, it's time to finish my pies for you and show you the last stage in this. Here's my sheets of pastry that I'm going to use. I've sat them out on the bench to thaw them out. They've been in the freezer. These are the pie tins I'm using. I use these over and over again. You just buy them from the uh, store. They come like this. And a pack of pie tins like this. They're just very light tinfoil things. Now, what I need to tell you is if you're making a family pie, you use that same mixture I showed you, except you make the beef chunkier, the vegetables chunkier, and you use a big pie tin like this. Potatoes and peas. But I'm going to use these. Now, the other thing I need to tell you is I hardly ever, ever use cooking spray. But because these little tins have little grooves all the way around, the only way to adequately grease them is with the cooking spray. So I'm going to spray each one with the cooking spray inside, and I'll put those in the sink and give them a quick um, buzz around with that. Okay, I've sprayed all my tins. You put your pies on the tray, and I'll tell you why you need a baking tray for two reasons. First reason is it's if they do break open, they'll spill over onto the baking tray instead of all over the oven. And the second reason is the baking tray will heat up and cook the bottom of these pies because they're in tin foil. If you just sit them on a wire rack in the oven, the bottom won't cook, but if you put them on these trays. The bottom will cook nice and golden brown. Now I'm going to put these in the oven. Okay, quickly about these pies. Can they be frozen? Absolutely. Put them in the fridge after you've um, taken them out of the oven. Put them in the fridge, let them cool down. Bag them up, chuck them in the freezer and take them out. I have a little turbo oven here and I put them in that 15 minutes they're ready to eat. Okay, my pies are done. I'm just going to take one of these out so you can see the bottom of it. There you go, nice and cooked. That's how easy they came up, come out. This is a classic example of what happens if you fill your pies too full. Split open and spill out. So don't, try not to keep them, uh, try not to fill them up too much. But there you have it. I'm going to put them in the fridge to cool down. And I'm going to whack them in the freezer and send some to my son, which the, these will be devoured in a couple of days anyway. They won't last that long. And that, my friend, is how you make pepper steak pies. Smile and have a nice day.